I'm Mitch Marks, electrification specialist with HBK, and today I'm going to be speaking about durability testing in electric motors. So in our electric powertrain, we have an inverter connected to a motor, and then often we have a gearbox. And each one of these components is going to have individual um, failure modes and ways that, that durability is going to affect it over time. And we need to test the durability of each one of these components so we can know how long they're going to last in the field. Now, today we're gonna to focus on the motor and some of its failure modes, but really the testing methodology and understanding the, the physics of failure is similar for all three. So one of the um, issues with motors is we have a stator that's a chunk of iron and it has these teeth. And these teeth have individual windings around them. And if these motor windings are exposed to high temperatures, maybe some uh, vibrations, physical getting hit, um, these turns of this winding can get shorted together. And we call this a turn to turn short. And this electrically can result in changes of a harmonics, increased currents, lowered efficiencies, and um, also result to more heating or vibrations. So this is one mode of failure where we see mechanical influences affect the electrical outputs. Another method of failure is what we call delamination. So if we look at a motor stator, it's divided into these individual chunks of iron called laminations that are pressed together. And again, if this machine is exposed to excessive heat, physical vibrations, getting hit, one of these laminations or more can start to peel off. And this delamination is, again, going to change the harmonic pattern of the motor. It's going to change the waveform outputs of the voltage or current. It's going to change the efficiency. And it also could cause noise, vibration, and other mechanical outputs. The last method of failure that we'll discuss is demagnetization. So if we have a magnet in the motor, and this has a north and a south, this magnet has a given strength, indicated by flux lines, these dotted lines I'm drawing. And if this magnet, which is typically buried in the rotor, again, is exposed to excessive heat, excessive magnetic flux caused by increased currents, or some other factors, this magnet can demagnetize and either become weaker or completely non-magnetic, in which case we're going to lose out on power output. We're going to change the back EMF of the machine. And we're going to change that power output and, and total um, harmonic distortion of the motor. Again, possibly resulting in torque ripple, noise and vibration, more heating. And what we can see is that each one of these phenomena has an electrical signal that gets affected by a mechanical signal that results in a change of our electrical signal. So we really see this electric resulting in mechanical resulting in electric. It's a very electromechanical system and electromechanical art of failure. Now we also see that most of these failure modes are temperature dependent. And by being temperature dependent, they take a long period of time. Each one of these components is constrained by the temperatures they can be exposed to. So unlike traditional durability testing, where we can accelerate by running at a higher heat, we have to run these tests for up to 2,000 or more hours to really see the failure modes we want to understand. So we can understand this um, phase to phase short, so we can understand this delamination, so we can understand demagnetization. So this long duration of test can result in some issues. But fortunately, even though it's a mechanical and an electrical system, we can use electrical signals to characterize the physics of failure. For example, I mentioned the waveforms. We can look at the shape of our voltage or our current waveform and identify harmonics, identify amplitudes, identify waveform shape. And in the event something changes in our turn to turn in our magnets, these waveforms can potentially change amplitude or completely change shape. And their characteristics will change before we might see some of these mechanical failures. So by characterizing the waveforms, we can start to accelerate this testing. We can also look at the harmonic output of the machine. 
we can look and see, here's my fundamental, here's my third, here's my fifth. And over time, over that 2000 hours, we can see if there's long-term changes. Maybe my fundamental stays the same, but my fifth starts to drastically increase. This can help us identify if something's going to fail. And again, try to accelerate that testing or identify what the mode of failure is. Lastly, we can always measure kind of the traditional temperatures. And we can see if this machine is getting hotter. And again, identify, am I getting a delamination? Am I seeing turn to turn shorts by a combination of electrical and mechanical signals? So we can use all of these changes to identify failures. Now, one of the issues that comes up with this really long-term testing, this 2,000 hours of testing, combined with an inverter-driven machine, is that these inverters have a really high switching frequency. They might be operating in the tens of kilohertz, which means that we need to measure at hundreds of kilohertz, or even maybe a megahertz, in order to understand what's happening in that inverter and get some of these wave shapes. Fortunately, we can use things like calculations to very much reduce this amount of data. We can take this one mega sample data, perform a calculation like RMS or power averaging, and see a signal that's maybe at the 100 hertz level. This is gonna reduce our amount of data significantly so that we can do a test for up to 2,000 hours. Now, even though you've reduced the amount of data from mega samples to maybe 100 hertz of calculated data, during that 2,000 hour test, you still might wanna collect some of that high sample rate data for further analysis. Fortunately, if you have a test and you're measuring either an instantaneous or a measured signal and you see an anomaly, you can throw a trigger and collect that high sample rate data for a period of time. Then you can take this high sample rate data, bring it back to analyses, connect these electric and mechanical failures during that long-term test. Now, HBK has a great product called eDrive for doing these durability analyses. And the benefits of the eDrive are that we are both electrical and mechanical in our measurements. This means we can bring in those temperatures, those voltages, those currents, those noises, those vibrations, that torque ripple, and look at how one thing like voltage might result in a failure like noise or vibration. So this is really powerful. Another benefit we have is that during something like a 2000 hour test, we're able to record all of the data you want. This is gonna allow us to take that mega sample data for as long as you have hard drive space or reduce it and take many channels of calculated data. This ability lets you do all of the analyses that you could possibly need over that long-term test. Lastly, we have custom equations. These custom equations will allow us to combine those electric, those mechanical signals so that you can identify failures before they happen. Let's say, for example, you wanna look at the harmonics. You could look at the harmonics in this 100 hertz manner, trigger on it, and get some high sample rate data. So the eDrive is a very powerful tool for collecting all the data you need and possibly reducing that test time. Thank you for your time.